Hi, my name is Dr. Hrim Jaffer. Today I will discuss with you the pathological tooth migration. Please subscribe to my channel HL Talent to get more videos on the subject. Starting from definition. Pathological tooth migration refers to tooth displacement that result when the balance among the factors that maintain physiological tooth position is disturbed by periodontal disease. Most frequently occur in the anterior region, but posterior teeth also may be affected. In the occlusal or incisor direction, the migration is termed extrusion, like you see it here. There will be an extruded teeth vertically, the, the tooth will vertically migrate. So, regarding the pathogenesis, two major factors play a role in maintaining normal position of the teeth the health and normal height of periodontium, and also the force that exerted on the teeth. Forces acting on the tooth are from forces of occlusion and pressure from the lips, cheeks, and tongues. So, there, in order to have a pathological migration, you should have either periodontal disease or excessive occlusal forces, either from the teeth, tongue, lips, etc. Factors that are important in relation to the forces of occlusion include the following. We have morphology of the tooth, the presence of full component of teeth, physiological tendency toward mesial migration, that say the presence of any spaces, the nature and location of contact point relationship, proximal inci incisal and occlusal attrition, the axial inclination of the teeth. If there is alteration in any of these factors, there will be an, a start of interrelated sequence of changes in the environment of a single tooth or a group of teeth that may result from pathological migration because any of these factors contributing for worsening the force that are exerted on the teeth. So pathological migration occur under a condition that weaken the periodontal support, that increase or modify the forces exerted on the teeth or both. So we have periodontal disease and excessive occlusal force, we have pathological tooth migration. We have excessive occlusal force with the presence of one of these factors also, we have pathological tooth migration, or we have both of them, both of these factors, periodontal disease and excessive force, uh, we have pathological tooth migration. In cases of weakened periodontal support, the tooth with weak support is unable to maintain its normal position. This is a fact, because it moves away from the opposing force unless it's restrained by a proximal contact. Forces that are acceptable to an intact periodontium become injurious when periodontal support is reduced, as in the tooth with a proxim abnormal proximal contact. So, sometimes you may have an excessive occlusal force, but you have a weakened periodontal support. So, in this time also, uh, you have, you may have a uh, pathological migration. Abnormally located proximal contact convert the normal anterior component of the force to a wedging force that moves the tooth either occlusally or incisally. The wedging force, which can be withstood by intact periodontium, we have wedging force, but it could be tolerated by intact periodontium. But in case of weakened periodontium, cause the tooth to extrude 
uh, from the uh, when the parental support is weakened because its position change the tooth is subjected to abnormal occlusal force which will aggravate the periodontal destruction and the tooth migration pathological migration may continue after a tooth no longer contact is antagonist so we should have an antagonist because pressure from the tongue food bolus during mastication and the proliferating granulation should provide the force that move the tooth because sometimes the the missing teeth will cause a pathological uh, a physiological movement other than pathology there is no antagonist there is extrusion of the the teeth and uh, if there is no periodontal disease eventually later on may cause a weakened support and lead to periodontal disease Changing the force exerted on the teeth, we said in trauma from occlusion that changing the magnitude, direction, or frequency and duration of the forces that exerted on the teeth can induce pathological migration of a single tooth or a group of teeth. And change of the force may result in unreplaced missing teeth, failure to replace first molar because it's a crucial tooth and other causes what about unreplaced missing teeth what's the effect of unreplaced missing, missing teeth on pathological migration we have a term drifting drifting is different from pathological migration because drifting is somehow physiological, not pathological. It occurs when there is unreplaced missing teeth in the antagonist or sometimes uh, in the adjacent. Drifting differs from pathological migration in that it doesn't result from destruction of periodontal disease. However, as I talked about, it usually create, create a condition that leads to periodontal disease. So, the initial tooth movement is aggravated by loss of periodontal support. So, drifting generally occurs in a medial direction, combined with tilting or extrusion beyond the occlusal plane. Other, other important factor is failure to replace the first molar. In extreme cases, it consists of the following. When there is, there will be a failure to replace the first molar. The second and third molar tilt result in decreasing vertical dimension. The premolar move distally. And while drifting distally, the mandibular premolar lose their intercuspation relationship with the maxillary teeth. There will be an anterior overbite. The mandibular incisor of the lower strike the maxillary incisor near the gingiva and thus traumatizing the gingiva. The maxillary incisor are pushed labially and laterally. The anterior teeth extrude because the incisal opposition has largely disappeared. There will be an attrition. Also, diastema are created by the separation of the anterior teeth. Other causes, including as we talked about, trauma from occlusion, pressure from the tongue, and pressure from the granulation tissue. Trauma from occlusion can cause a shift in tooth position, either which we talked about a loss or weaken periodontal support and excessive occlusal force uh, or both of them pressure from the tongue can cause drifting of the teeth in the absence of periodontal disease but may contribute to pathological migration of teeth when there is a reduced periodontal support also in teeth which are weakened by periodontal destruction Pressure from the granulation tissue of periodontal pocket has been mentioned as a contributing factor of pathological migration. 
the teeth may return to its position after uh, after treatment of the pocket or elimination of the pocket but if more destruction has occurred on one side of the tooth than the other side the healing tissue tends the healing sorry the healing tissue tend to pull in the direction of the lesser destruction so uh, the granulation tissue of the periodontal pocket also affecting the tooth position and movement uh, and this is the end of this lecture thank you for your listening see you soon